Association's highest honor, um, the Roger Troy Peterson Award for promoting the cause of birding. And um, I, um, I was just curious, you, you spent a lot of time with Roger. Yeah. And uh, like, how old were you when you first met him? I think I was probably um, well, my first connection with him was my dad went up in 1978 to Old Lyme to uh, ask him if he would write a column or let us republish his column. Right. And uh, Dr. Peterson was very gracious, invited him into the home, and I didn't to stay out in my guest cottage. And, and my dad at some point said, oh, my son is a big fan of yours, and uh, uh, he asked me not to bring this, so of course I did. But this is a <laughs> painting he did of a cedar waxwing when he was like age 12 or something. Mm -hmm. I'm 16 or 17 at this point. And uh, Roger Peterson looked at it and you know, he said, it's very nice. I like the lines he's done here. Very complimentary, you know. And handed it back to my dad. And, and then... Uh, Somewhat like later in the evening, Roger gave a, a book to give to me, one of his, one of the Smithsonian books that Roger had that what, what traced birds from dinosaurs to, you know, the modern, right. uh, modern taxonomy. And, uh, oh man, I poured over that thing and it was dedicated to me. And I was excited about that. Then when, when Hawk Mountain, uh, was dedicated for its 50th, I think. Uh, anniversary, I went up there and my, my dad introduced me to him. He said, Oh, yeah, fine young man. I really enjoyed a lot of the things you've produced. And I'm sort of thinking, I, mean, I haven't really produced that much yet. <laughs> a couple of articles and things like that. And, um, but he was very nice. And at, at one point, there was a there was this huge line of people uh, waiting to get their books signed. And he said, Can we just hold this up a second? I want to take. Uh, young Master Thompson here in his, in his full hearing out to listen to this certain insect sound out here that I'm, that I'm hearing that I, I, can't, I can't quite identify. Sure enough, we went out back to the food service area and opened the back of the tent and here's this weird katydid sound. And I had zero clue what it was, but I knew it was different. <laughs> From the the ones that I regularly heard in Ohio, mm -hmm. and so I said, "Well, that's it's certainly different from the ones we have in the Midwest." And he said, "I knew it. I knew that sound is, is different. Can you describe?" I said, "Well, this one sounds more burry and elongated and like drier, maybe, you know." And uh, um, he said, "That's what I thought. Now I'm going to press them down at the museum to." Uh, to make this, get this written up, because I think this is a new species, perhaps a new family of katydids. So, some years later, I mean, I never kept up with that. I don't read all the insect journals like you apparently did. Uh, sure enough, it was named a new uh, insect, I guess, like family, or mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they, they were they were known as. Um, not Peterson's, the name was in there, but they were known as like some variation of the town where, where we were there, mm -hmm. and then the guy who had discovered it. And it was, I mean, it's not that interesting a story, but it kind of showed me like, that's pretty cool how like he knew with his 81 year old ears or whatever he had that that was different. Mm -hmm. So he called me out there for corroboration. I offered the the minimalist, you know, like, yes, it sounds different. And, you know, he took that and pushed it through the academic 
uh, rigors of vetting and got to the point where, yeah, it was actually a, a new species. And of course, there are people that are arguing, oh, you know, you can't, can't just do a species like that just based on sound alone, but with yeah. insects, that's uh, pretty much the only way you can do it, you know, without getting down to the DNA level. But that showed me that, number one, the consistent, insatiable curiosity he had, <laughs> the desire to push and the energy to push for an answer of some kind, or push it at least farther, kick the can down the road farther, yeah. um, his desire to get those results shared and verified and published if possible, and then his desire to share it with other people. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's, he was called like the greatest natural history teacher of all time, I think. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was a really fine indication of that. And he, he uh, loved being in touch with his local clubs, and he stayed. I think some people in the Brooks Bird Club and the people in the, uh, was the, the Lake Club that he was a member of up there. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, no, these aren't sailing sporting clubs. These are natural history clubs. All through those years in the 50s, 60s, 70s, when that really wasn't popular until it kind of came back. Largely driven by his energy and curiosity and um, just uh, unstoppable drive for discovery. Well, there's a bunch of things that I just love about that story. <laughs> and the, um, I got to say, every time I would run across Roger, um, and I guess the first time was when I was a senior in high school, you know, he just, he would always inquire about, like, birders around Delaware. As soon as, you know, I'm from Delaware, he would ask me about, you know, folks, and he really you know, had these people in his mind and how they were doing and what they were doing and what they were finding out, which I think was really impressive. And, you know, the, the scientific curiosity, but then also the, you know, the imbuing, the sharing and the recognition that kids are really useful. Yeah. Because if nothing else, when we're, you know, bird crazy kids, we got really sharp ears and really sharp eyes. <laughs> and lots of time. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And lots of energy. And so, um, that's, that's, that's a fantastic illustration of, uh, you know, Peterson, um, and, and sort of what he was and what he represented. And, you know, the ABA calls this award, the Roger Troy Peterson Award for promoting the cause of birding. Um, and, and I really think of it, you know, we, we think of it as our highest award, but to me, it is the polymath award. It is the award for um, somebody like Peterson who, who really excelled in a number of areas. I mean, almost, uh, you know, a supernatural number of areas. And, um, you know, that's, that's obviously true of you in spades um, between all your creative talents and endeavors. But, um, you know, I think also just, again, that, um, that sharing, that reaching out, that, um, you know, not keeping it to yourself yeah. and, uh, and realizing that, uh, that by sharing it, we're all, you know, made better enlarged and um man um you know this is an award that you earned long ago and i knew someday you know i'd, I'd have the honor of giving it to you um oh. i always thought maybe there was even more time um you know to just watch you continue to do amazing things and, and innovate and um but anyway um i'd like uh, we have Vice Chair of the American Birding Association, Julie Davis, here. And um, I, I want to present you uh, with the Roger Street Peterson Award for promoting the cause of birding. And um, we have the advantage here of, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you the nomination I wrote. Wow. And, um, and you can edit it. Uh -huh. So, like, you know, if there's anything in that you want to change or adjust it, we can... There's one thing I am. Yeah. I am an editor. <laughs> so, um, Bill Thompson III has been among the most visible, creative, vital, and effective advocates for birding, birders, and bird conservation for more than 30 years. 
His charismatic, engaging, humorous, and open-hearted approach to birding and to people in general has made him a favorite leader, ambassador, and spokesperson for our community and its values. I don't know if you want to change that to spokes model. Yeah. Well. But um, <laughs> anyhow, um, he has been particularly devoted to and successful at recruiting, teaching, and inspiring newer birders of all ages. Bill was honored by the American Birding Association in 2008 with the ABA Robert Ridgeway Award in recognition of his many publications, including his role as publisher and editor of Birdwatcher's Digest, which continues to this day, and his numerous books on birds and nature, including The New Birder's Guide to Birds in North America, Birdwatching for Dummies, 18 different state birdwatching books in the Birdwatching A Year-Round Guide series, and All Things Reconsidered, My Birding Adventures by Roger Troy Peterson, which he edited. Mm. All of Bill's written work, whether as author or editor, in books, magazines, or online, has sought to convey the excitement, joy, and meaning to be found in time spent birding and in the fellowship of bird watchers and appreciators and students of nature. Bill has been a consistent pioneer and trailblazer in bringing birders and birders, birding and birders to digital media and the World Wide Web. He writes the Bill of the Birds blog and created the popular podcast, This Birding Life, as well as Out There with the Birds. He is active on social media as well, consistently championing and modeling positive behaviors toward birds, conservation, and people around the world. In 2008, Bill was awarded a Service Citizen Award from the United States Fish and Wildlife Service for his contributions in making the National Wildlife Refuge System more birder and bird friendly. Bill has also shown that birding and its associated industries are an important economic force and can be a force for conservation and social good as well. He founded the American Birding Expo in 2015 and is a popular and sought after speaker, field trip leader, and consultant at birding festivals, ecotourism events, and publish industry, publishing industry conferences. Most of all, Bill Thompson III has shown us all that a life spent birding, getting out there with the birds, in the company of birders, and with ample measures of laughter and music along the way, is a very good life indeed and one that can allow us all to leave this world better than we found it. For all his many contributions to promoting the cause of birding, the American Birding Association is proud to present its highest honor to Bill Thompson III. Yay! That's beautiful. As they say, this is... Nothing but a token, but... Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> so beautiful. Oh. Wow. 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 Oh, it's engraved. So awesome. Oh, so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> I mean, so many of people are so thankful to you. And... Even the birds in their way are thankful to you. Oh, it's really cool that it's the 50th anniversary. Yeah, I got the 50th anniversary look going there. Double bonus. <laughs> oh, wow. So now we go on the Worldwide Hotspots Tour, like... Um, <laughs> right. no, no more Flat Williams. <laughs> it's going to be that. Right. Oh, my God. This is, this is so special, you guys. Well, so, you, you, you know, you're, you're not in it for the, for the rewards and the recognition and stuff. But when they come, man, they sure are sweet. Oh, well, my goodness. Life gets by you, and we all don't take enough time to say thanks and to say I love you. And uh, anyway, man, you, uh, you really made a huge difference for me and for a whole lot of people. Oh, Everybody in this room. Oh, <laughs> I'll say. Yeah.
And, and you, you for me, Jeff. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's kind of cool that that we came kind of into our new uh, roles, or skins, if you will, um, together. You know, kind of the time you were getting stuff rolling with with, with ABA and um, getting comfortable with it. I was fully taken over the helms at BWD and yeah. had a whole bunch of new stuff launching. And you know, we've always been kindred spirits as organizations, and um, oh. it just pleases me. There's so much that I've stolen from you <laughs> and your extended family at BWD. I mean, I said, you know, here's here's a guy who has a, a for-profit business and it feels more like a family than this organization that's supposed to be about the community of Burdick. And so, you know, when I was lucky enough to get, you know, hired as president, I'm like, I'm going to crew as many of Bill's moves as I can <laughs> because, you know, you... Uh, you know, and a lot of birding magazines are not with us anymore. Mm -hmm. um, didn't make it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think anybody knows that uh, your secret weapon was always making people feel like they were part of something more than a subscriber base. Yeah. yeah. Um, that they were part of a, a legitimate community. And, um, yeah, and, and uh, to me also... Very much at that same time, um, OS started yeah. started happening here, and that was like almost like putting the uh, putting the anchor or the, the center of gravity in the heartland, so that you didn't have this East Coast West Coast, you know, bias like those poor gangster rappers do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but you had, and you know, you got. Biggest week here, and you know, OS has been such a strong organization going way back, producing you know, more sort of scientific stuff. But even it's become more popular now, and other states around Kentucky, Indiana, Pennsylvania are trying to emulate OS. And that, that's a successful formula for growth is find somebody you like, you, you like what they're doing, ask their permission, <laughs> or or ask their forgiveness later, but anyway, <laughs> anyway what's what's uh, successful? And I've always argued that there there really isn't any pure competition in our industry, if you will. There's death by flattery, and <laughs> death by emulation. But that's the emulatee's fault. Hey, look, a Phoebe. Oh, oh. Really? yep, there it is. She's with us, right out there on the line. Oh. <laughs> There she is. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, but um, you get the feel when you've been doing this for a long time. That really, it's okay to let people emulate you or copy or rip you off. <laughs> it's okay because, we're f first of all, we're fighting over the dollars of birding. <laughs> you know, it's not like we're fighting over um, the treasure of Sierra Madre. <laughs> and secondly, sometimes some good stuff comes out of that, you know? Good new partnerships, good new way of seeing things. Oh, I always thought so-and-so was a, a mean asshole. And they're, actually, they're not. They actually have a lot of good ideas. You know, I think, I think that you're, you're really setting a good course, Jeff, for the future not just of ABA, but of all organizations. I'm very impressed by that, but of course I do. I knew that was in you all the time. Well, you're too kind, but again, um, it's all about, you know, the amazing stuff that you've been able to do and that you've inspired others to do. So, again, thanks. And I feel like we should give the crew here a chance to yeah. put their phones down. <laughs> but thank you all for, for being here. Thanks, Bill. <laughs>